appreciate it because all you want to do is live like other people. Right? You want to live like other people. You don't feel successful because you're comparing yourself to somebody else. I'll say what y'all want to say. I'm the Lord off the chain. The Lord off the chain. They lying and tell you. They lying and tell you they got something good going on over there. Yeah. Annie Laura's got something cooking over there. That's the trap house. They got lines upon lines upon lines. Precepts upon precepts upon precepts. Of fried chicken. Yeah. And collard greens and all this type of stuff. Right? They have all of that. John chapter number 6, verse number 50 says, This is the bread that comes down out of heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. So here's we're looking at this passage, Yeshua talking, Jesus is talking, and he says, This is the bread of life that comes down out of heaven. So Automatically, one should already understand that he's talking about the spirit and not talking carnal. Yes, but they weren't taught that. They were taught the letter and not the spirit of the law. Right? Mm -hmm. Verse number 51 says, I am the living bread mm -hmm. that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, believes in me, and I'm reading from the Amplified, accepts me as Savior, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh body. Verse 52 says, Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this be? Give, how can this, I'm sorry, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? He just told you that he's the bread of life that came down from heaven, but they simply think he's talking about flesh. Which means that there are people in the assembly that is carnal. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You gotta know the difference. Just because they worship, just because they put their hands up in the air, just because they run around, uh -huh. just because they do all of this stuff, that don't mean that they're spiritual. Come on. Come on. They are carnal because as soon as they leave the place, they get in their they true self. Uh -huh. You are dealing with a representative when he walks in the door, just like a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> It's easy to wait a minute before you move too fast. Paul even said, don't lay hands mm -hmm. on, on no man so suddenly. That's right. Give them an opportunity to reveal themselves. He says right here in verse number 52, then the Jews begin to argue with one another saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood unless you believe in me as Savior and believe in the saving power of my blood which shall be shed for you. Unless you believe in these things, mm -hmm. not just here, you have to believe in the power for the power to be activated. See, it tells me how much you believe in the power, beloved. Do you talk more about the power? Do you talk more about the son? Do you talk about the devil? Mm, 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 mm. If you are victorious and you say that the devil under your feet, you shouldn't spend more time talking about him That's than right. the power. Come on. Come on. See, I start to listen to how people, people will tell on themselves. Yeah. They'll tell you. They'll tell you and they will also show you what they've been doing the night before. Come on. Sometimes you have to pay attention and watch. He says, listen here, in verse number 54, he says, the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, believes in me, accept me as Savior, has eternal life. Mm -hmm. That is, now, now possesses me. And I will raise him up from the dead in the last day. Now I want y'all to pay attention to something here. You have to understand, most of us, we know about the twins. Mm -hmm. He's talking, there's over seven, there's about 72 disciples. Yes. Uh -huh. Not just 12. Yes, uh -huh. The one who he's talking to, he's not just
just talking about the 12. He says right here in verse number 56, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood believes in me. Accept me as Savior remains in me and I the same way remain in him. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. Even so, the one who feeds on me believes in me and accept me as Savior. You should be feeding on him every day, not just one day. Not just one day. And it ain't about how good you dress. Come on. Oh, Come on. Come on. It's not about the baskets. It's not about the pink suits, the red suits, the green suits, how fly you are, the gators, and all this other stuff. You say it's about him, about his resurrection, but you're thinking about them. I'm trying to understand this concept. I'm trying to understand how do we give more to us than we give to him. We have to look at this and change our way of thinking about things. This is not being legalistic. And the question is, is why are we doing what we're doing? That's the question. We are to feed off of him as he said. If we be disciples of Christ, then be a disciple. We don't need no more fugazi in the Bible. Verse number 58 says, this is the bread which came down out of heaven. This is the bread which came out of you used to you used to hearing the story about eating matter that came down from heaven as a temporary as a foreshadow, but the true and living bread that will supply that will fill you up. He is the bread of life. Man should not live by bread alone. Man should not live by just manna falling from heaven. See, you know what manna is? Manna is living from check to check. That's what manna is. I don't know about y'all. I'm tired of living from check to check. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't living from check. I'm telling you, everybody talking about reparations. But let me tell you something. These stimulus checks that y'all getting, mm -hmm. if you don't know how to be good stewards over That's the right. stimulus, how in the world you expect the most high to give you reparations? Right. Because you know what you're going to do? You're going to do just the same as they need. Uh, they're gonna, you're going to create golden calves. You know what you're going to calf in? Going to buy a new car. That's right. Going to get you some rims on it. Going to deck your house out. Going to do all these type of things. you expecting the most high to give you something, and yet you don't know how to be good over a good steward over less. There's three seasons you're going to go through. A season of not enough. A season of just enough uh -huh. and a season of more than enough. Yeah. When you come into the season of more than enough, did you learn from the just enough and the not enough season? That's the question you yes. So when you come into the season, because all of us go through these three seasons, once you get in that season of more than enough, I'm not going back to the season of just enough. I'm not going back to the season of not enough. So just because I got it, that don't mean I gotta go by that state. Just because I got it, that don't mean I gotta go by that state. We eat sandwiches tonight, honey. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We eat sandwiches tonight. Yeah. Just because I got it, I ain't got to go buy the flat screen TV. I'm sorry. I will watch it on my phone. They got TV apps and everything yes, on the phone. Right. I'm not going to buy it. Now, you do what you want to do. I'm not trying to control you or tell you what to do. But here's the thing. Don't come running to the pastor yes, when your life's about to get cut off. Yes, See, this is the problem. This is what I'm saying. Most people, it's not an emergency when they come to you. It's been three, four months. That they know that they didn't pay, they didn't pay their life bill. Here's the thing also. What did you do with your money? What did you do with your money? Right, right. You got your stimulus? You got your first of the month? Uh-oh. And you got your check. Yesterday we was at the mall. The mall was packed. It's Easter weekend. It's stimulus uh -huh. and folk got paid. Yes, sir. The mall was packed. Uh -huh. The mall was packed and on today the church is empty. Uh -huh. Hey! Uh -huh. The mall is packed. Uh -huh. And Wednesday night service, the church is empty. Uh -huh. Let's be real. Uh -huh. Let's be real. Let's be real. Like, are you still there? Are you still there? Are you just riding and dying based on circumstance. Oh, Verse 15 says, just as the Father sent me and I live because of the Father, even so the Son, even so the one who feeds off of me, believes in me, accepts me as Savior, will also live because of me. 58, this is the bread which came down from heaven. It's not like the manna 
not like the manna that of our fathers ate and they eventually died. Yeah. You know what? They died. They, they complained. That's what they did. See, let me tell you something. Murmurs and complainers don't go into the promised land. I don't need murmurs and complainers around me. That's right. You don't need them in your life. That's right. Here's the thing. They complained about not having enough. The father sent more than enough, and they got tired. We tired of eating bread. We want some chicken. We want some chicken. Right, Most I say, okay, all right, cool. Here gonna do some chicken. <laughs> then they can find something else to complain about. Uh -huh. We got we we we're, we're tired because our shoes or our feet are getting too small. Mm -hmm. So Moses, okay, fine. Well, I will allow, will bless your feet so that as you grow, your shoes grow. Mm -hmm. And then they got tired of the clothing. They got tired of the meals. Then they start talking about when we were back in Egypt. We had collard greens, yams, mm -hmm. macaroni and cheese. <laughs> we had fruits. Mm -hmm. And now all we got is manna and chicken. Mm -hmm. We tired most. Then they start coming against the leader. Mm -hmm. The leader who prayed yeah. on their behalf. Yeah. Then they start coming against him. Yes. Moses, we can do it better than you. We sick of you, Moses. Come on now. We sick and tired of you. But all Moses did was intercede. That's right. Now when it came time for Moses' intercession, nobody was around. Right. Right. This is why Moses didn't get the grace that others got. Because he didn't have nobody to intercede for him. Come on now. Just like today. Pastor, intercede for the people and they will run out on you quick as they can. Until they go through something else. Right. Then they expect us to be openly and gracefully. No, you better find out in this particular passage. When they left, Yeshua asked his disciples, you going with them? See, we never throw that scripture. You know, uh, you know uh, he left the 99 to go after one. He didn't leave the, see, he didn't leave the 12 to go after them 60. He didn't leave the 12. He asked them, are you going to? Pastor, stop running after folks right. that don't want to be here. Because right. all we do is get abused. Right. And then we want to cry out to the Most High. The same way Joshua cried out. Uh -oh. And the Most High, get your behind up, Joshua. Come on. Come on. Get up to crying for them. <laughs> you know they were sinners. That's right. Come on. Come on. See, we don't live a book for real. I'm telling you, I'm telling tell we don't live a book for real. We don't live a book for real. We don't live a book for real. We don't live the book for real. You know why? Because I read in the in the letters of Paul where he put the devil on people. He put the devil on. Turn them over to Satan. If you can't do no more for them, you done prayed all you can pray. You done been to the hospital with them. When their children was going to jail, you were at the jailhouse. You were doing all of these things with them on their behalf. They calling you 3 o'clock in the morning, interrupting the sleep that you need. And yet, all of a sudden, they turn their back. Turn them over to the devil. See, it ain't about them betraying you, turning their back and leaving. It's how you do it. And on your way out the door, you want to tell the name of the ministry. Uh, this is the problem. Uh, this is why he said, listen, that joker sleeping with his father's wife, father's uh, 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 wife, kick that joker out the church. Uh, right, y'all don't know his folks that's in the See, these messages y'all don't like me. Y'all want to hear how many, how many, how many, how many cars you're going to get. Uh, you want to hear how many blessings you're going to get that job and all that other stuff. See, that's what's wrong with the body now. That's why you ain't got no faith. And that's why as soon as the mosquito hits you, you fold. Because the point is, all you worry about is how much you can get from God. That's it. How much you can get to me? When are you going to get me something? All of your prayers is about what you can get from me. I need you to give me some. I'm the creator of all. I watched your as you slept. You ain't missed a meal on the table. The job lets you go, but you're still making it. The car ain't running all the way good, but it's still running. Even if the car break down, you got the bus system. Even if the bus system break down, you got Uber. See, you can find out all these things, but then you don't appreciate it because you want what
what you want. He said, I supply all your needs. Just look at just look at the earth. Your needs is being met in the earth. All you know, people giving away free food. All kinds of stuff. You can get canned goods. You can get all this other stuff and you don't appreciate it. Because all you want to do is live like other people. Right? You want to live like other people. You don't feel successful because you're comparing yourself to something.